Um, very Irish today. <laughs> St. Patrick's weekend's coming up. Uh, now we've joined Cloda in the kitchen. It was cooking up a proper St. Patrick's dish for us, aren't you, Cloda? Yes, I am. I'm making pure Irish soul food. It is my mom's Irish lamb stew. And anybody who's Irish or has got Irish parents or a bit of Irish in them will know Irish lamb stew is like... Beauty. And the I best. just want to say thank yeah. you for our shamrocks. Oh, aren't they lovely? Yeah, they're what lovely. Thank you. Thanks a million. Oh, thank you. Well, actually, Tourism Ireland did, so thank you so much. Thank they you, Tourism Ireland. But, Dermot, you'd know that growing up in an Irish home. Absolutely. Like, we'd always wear these on St. Patrick's Day, but there's only one place in Ireland left that's actually making them and growing them. that's them, very strange. And yeah, Slointha, guys. Is it too early to have a Slointha? Never. These Let's have been hanging around a while, that's all I'll say. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Slointha. But, you thank you. Happy thank St. You. Patrick's yes. weekend. Happy St. Patrick's weekend. Oh. OK, so on with the cook. So, mm. Oh. Or we, should we not do oh, a cup and just, just have a gossip in the Guinness? So lovely. <laughs> <laughs> no, OK, sorry. Um, so this is the lamb stew that I grew up with. And it has got such a lovely special place in my heart. My mother used to make it. And her mother would make it too. And did your mummy make it? She did. My grandmother that? O'Leary especially made it. She had, she'd keep a stew on for days. Did she? Yeah. Josie, have you got Irish in you? Oh, well, well my granddad Gilbert is from Mayo, yeah. Really? Yeah. So, but, um, I mean, we're a fan of the stew in our eyes. Because I'm Aww. one of a lot of children. So, yeah, oh, stew. Lovely. You can put it on the side. It'll feed you for And it feeds you forever. It's a one pot. And the first thing you do, and my mother used to always do it, and, and I feel like we've stopped doing it and I really would love to bring it back. Well, two things I'd love to bring back. The first mm. is the stock, making the stock. So you get the raw lamb bone in the butcher shop. They usually give it to you for free. If you're worried you mightn't have it, just give them a call ahead and ask nice, nice term. Um, pop it into a big pot like that. Put an onion in, a carrot in, some herbs, a couple of black peppers like that, and then fill it with cold water. And all you do then, I mean, it takes no time. It's just seconds. Fill it with cold water, bring it up to the boil, and then let it simmer for about two or three hours. And, Clodagh, should and you chop your veg when you do that? Or does it, does you know it make any difference at all? You don't you... really have to, no. Do you not? Not when you're doing a bone stock like that. You don't have to, yeah. So if I do chicken stock with no, like, like Sunday roast carcass... I just throw them in. You just throw them in. Yeah. It makes no difference if you chop them. I feel really lazy now. No, I'm just <laughs> interested. Like, if, if you cut it, then more stuff comes out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. I've just got to wash my hands from touching the bone. Um, <laughs> I'm going to get these bowls ready for um, us, But no, you don't have to. You don't have to chop them up. Yeah. Um, anyhow, that one's going crazy over there. Let me turn that one down a little bit. And so that's the first thing. And then the next thing, then, is browning off everything. So when you're doing your lamb stew this weekend, which I know you'll all be doing, um, get lamb cutlets or lamb chops instead, because they've got the bone in it. And we were talking about this earlier, weren't we? Yeah. We were talking about how the difference it makes Brown everything off first. So I had my lovely Irish butter in there, melted down, and then I browned off all these lovely lamb chops. These are called lamb chump chops because they're bigger and they're juicier. So get them for your butcher. Support your local butcher this weekend. Yeah. And, um, or you can get cutlets if you want to. If you can't get them and you're just going to the local shop, whatever, you can get the stewing lamb. It does make a difference as the bone is in there because the flavour. So then the next thing I'm going to do, so I brown those off, pop them onto a plate. Now... There's you always like to brown with butter rather than oil. Yes, yeah. yeah. If you're afraid it's going to burn a little bit, put a tiny bit of vegetable oil in there, something that won't flavour that much. And then I put my carrots in, and then I... Is that on? And you brown those as well, do you? I brown those as well, wow. yeah. They all get brown, nice and tanned. And then I put my onions in there. Now, there's quite a lot of onions. But you'll know that Irish stew has a lot of onions in there. But because they get... They all so melt down anyway, don't they? They melt down and Come they get caramelly and they be absorb fine. everything. And I feel like... You know, onions usually have, like, a bad wrap, but in this, oh, it's this so day. good. So you want to brown up all of those. And then what you do then is you put all these lamb chops back in. Now, this feeds a crowd. This one feeds eight. That's why I've got so many lamb chops. It's like a mountain of lamb chops. We're going for it here, Cloda. Cloda. Oh, you're going the... in? Oh, yeah. we have to try this. So oh, that thank soda you. bread I made this morning here in the kitchen. No. That's my rosemary soda bread. And it's up on the This Morning app. You can get the mm. recipe up there. I love rosemary. That's mm. Ireland, isn't it? Mm. Soda bread and butter is Ireland. So I've put the chops back in, OK? You saw me doing that. And then the next thing I'm going to do then is pop in pearl barley. So I love pearl barley. Pearl barley. And then I think the younger generation might not know of pearl barley. It's an ancient grain and it was used in Ireland and in lots of other countries. 
to really plump up, to make the stew go a bit further. And it's gorgeous because it's kind of got like a nutty flavour and it, it absorbs all of the gorgeous juices from the stock. So you ah. pop it all in there and then you pop in the stock. So this is the stock after two or three hours of simmering away. So you pop that all in, like so. Isn't that lovely? Mm. You pour that all in there. And then I always put my potatoes on the top. I don't brown my potatoes. I just pop them on the top so that they don't fall apart. Yeah. Because um, the ones in the middle, like the vegetables in the middle, can, can tend to get a little bit mushy. So I put all mine on the top. My mother used to do this too. Here I'm taking... Oh, no, so you don't part boil them or anything? Uh, no. No, you, oh, right, okay. Oh, yeah. This goes into the oven for like an hour and a half. So I lost one here, didn't I? And then you put a little bit of herbs in here too. I'll sprinkle on the top like that. It'll all infuse everything. Salt and pepper. And then you could, like, for example, if you're making this for St. Patrick's Day, put a lid on it and then put it into the oven for an hour and a half. But if you're making this for St. Patrick's Day, you could cook it off now, which is Sunday, by the way. You could cook it off now and it would be gorgeous on the day. Yeah. Then on the days, one last step, which is really important, my mother would always do, she'd make a little roux, which is, she definitely didn't call it a roux. She'd call it a little... <laughs> <laughs> call it butter and flour. <laughs> and you melt a little bit of butter and then you put the flour in on top, whisk it together, and it basically is a thickener for your stock. Or for your, yeah, your stock. Or so when would you put that in? So what you do then is when your stew is cooked, you take off the juices, which I did a second ago here because I'm wearing white. You drain them? <laughs> you drain them. The all juices of it? Off. Oh. About a two thirds of it. You don't have to take all of it. And then what you do then is you pop the juices in here like that. Ah, there. And then you whisk it together and the roux will just thicken it up because there's nothing worse than having a stew. And, Too you know, watery. the juices yeah, are watery yeah, yeah. and they're not thick enough. You want that gorgeous, lovely thickness. So you just let that thicken up a little bit like that. And then you pour it over. And I have to say, my favourite way... Do you want to give yourselves a little ladle? Yes, please. I would love to. And I've got to say, that soda bread is incredible. Isn't it? Uh, the whole bit. The whole bit. And then you so pour that Guinness. gorgeous gravy that's now thickened back over it like that. And then you serve it up. And I'm sorry, there is... You could have all the fancy pants, recipes and dishes this weekend, but actually, this is the best tasting. Look at that. It makes you Thank feel you. like you're at home. Like, look at it. Oh, oh look oh my at gosh. that. Oh, my gosh, here we go. Thank you, Cloda. Oh, I hear a little bit of potato. And then, I, I, wish, I wish I could put the smell of this through your TV <laughs> right now, because, <laughs> oh, oh it's, yeah, it smells insane. I mean, doesn't it make you feel happy? Very happy. <laughs> well, I just don't think is... you can beat a stew. You can feed a stew. And this is the your mum's recipe. Are, and it's my mum's recipe. The chops are the, the game changer for me. Oh, never the had chops, it with oh. The chops are the game changer. But I think we all have wonderful recipes, don't we, from our mothers and our yeah. grandmothers and our fathers and our yeah. grandfathers. And I think it's really important to keep, to keep everything going, to keep the memory alive, to keep the tradition alive and to keep their Irish culture a tradition yeah. alive oh, as well. well and pass it all you. down. Yeah, lovely. Oh, Details of today's Clodagh. recipe, check out the free This Morning app. Thank you, Clodagh.